Today we've got a new utility iron from Ping. It is the iCrossover. Thomas has joined me today. We'll do some testing and we'll tell you everything that you need to know. Golfers, make sure if you haven't yet, you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, and you tell us in the comments what you think of the new iCrossover. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined today by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing, in the tour van at Minnetonka. New utility iron today from Ping. It's the eye crossover. Uh, unique one because you know Ping's always had their, their kind of crossover iron, that utility iron um, blended with sort of their, uh, I guess, their G425, right, or G410. They've had that club blended with the naming convention of their irons. However, this is a little different. They don't have it. You know, it's not the, the G425 crossover. That one's a little bit thicker. This is a little thinned out. I think primarily designed for the, I guess, better player looking for lower launch, maybe with some more workability as well. Yeah, just initial impressions. It looks a little smaller. It looks like it, yeah, a little lower ball flight, more mm -hmm. penetrating off the tee kind of yeah. club for maybe those faster swing speed golfers that are trying to get something out and play. Yeah, and I think it's you know maybe a fairy finder too, another way to, to look at it. So one of the things kind of diving into the, the, the nitty gritty here is with the tech stuff. Um, you know, the Micro Max groups from Ping started with, I believe, I-59, incorporated into I-525, uh, now in the I-230s. Now they're in the I-crossover. So this is uh, the first time we've seen them in a utility iron. The design is, you know, there's tighter space between the grooves, more grooves on the face, so a little more consistency, maybe all over the face, don't necessarily hit the center every time, might go low on the face, might high, uh, and also in a variety of weather conditions, more consistent spin, which really is going to benefit specifically the player that likes to, or is going to be fit into this club. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because we've, we've seen success with I-59, yeah. I-525, and then even I-230 I here. Yeah. Um, I'm not so sure what to expect. I mean, yeah. looking down at it for sure, I mean, I'm seeing more groups, I'm yeah. seeing them closer together. I think the most important thing you touched on though is going to be consistency. Yeah. You know, you've got a club that's got 18, 20, 20 and a half, 22 and a half degrees loft on it. Yeah. Um, give or take before the, before the changes. Right. It's gonna be a little harder to control. Yeah. So maybe those, those Micromax grooves just help with regards to consistencies yeah. on the distance you're trying to get. Right, I mean, especially with these type of clubs, the kind of that, that you know, really explosive type material, like the miraging steel face, you know, those things, it, a lot of explosives. Sometimes though, you get the jumper that deviates a little bit from the average distance, yep. but those grooves should be um, a way to kind of mitigate that a little bit. Um, the other thing too we need to talk about is the loft sleeve. So that's first time from Ping, we've seen a loft sleeve in the utility iron. The trajectory tuning 2.0 allows a fitter like yourself to go in, make adjustments to the loft and the lie and help a golfer out and fit them. So that's something new. Uh, with this model here. Right, and I think the offerings are 18, 20, 22 and a half degrees. Yes. You can go down, you can go up, yep. you can really kind of fine tune the gapping in your bag or what you're looking for. But I also like the fact that it's got printed on there the lie angle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's telling you exactly what you're doing to the lie angle. And as a fitter, it's great to be able to manipulate that starting point or where the ball's going. And a lot of golfers that have, that kind of fit into these clubs here, they're trying to, they're, they don't want to hit it left. Right. Like sometimes a hybrid for example, is more of a, a left shot. These are a little anti-left. You can even make this thing even more anti-left and go after it and just trust that you can right. eliminate one side of the golf course. Right, for sure. And I think in the future we'll do some testing maybe with this compared to a hybrid. And we'll also do some testing maybe with those settings and see what kind of adjustment you can make here. But uh, let's get to the testing here, Thomas. I want to see you hit some kind of some nukes here with this thing. Uh, we'll see what kind of performance it has both. Maybe we'll throw off, throw off the tee here a little bit as well. Uh, we'll see what it can do. Let's do it. Right out of the gate, over 150 ball speed. Okay. So uh, I mean, off the tee, that's that's a pretty good shot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're totally in 1272. Um, are you looking for a certain number out of? I mean, I don't know what you have in your bag in terms of loft. That's 18 degrees. Um, so, and it's obviously a different shaft and things. Uh, but what type of number would you think for a club like this in your bag? Yeah. I mean, I. Normally, I'm looking for 240 to 260 with a, okay. with a driving iron that I play okay. in my bag right now. So this it has outperformed a, a little bit. Now, yeah. I play about a 2.75, and this, yeah. is a, this is a 2. So that, okay. with it being a little stronger, it. lofted, it's going to go a little further. Yeah, sure. But okay. Yeah, 272.5, first swing is pretty good. Yeah. Didn't quite catch that one, but yeah. 
I bit, mean, a little more spin. Yeah, you still got that kind of draw to turn over a little bit. Just, a, I mean, the spin only jumped up really a couple hundred RPM, so it's not yeah. like it was crazy. Yeah, it felt like I hit it slightly lower on the face. But got away with it though, still pretty good numbers. Ooh, there we go. It's back over 150. Yep. Curious on your feedback now on the on the shaft. So this is the Ping Tour um, 2.0 yep. Chrome. So it, you know the Ping Tour has been a staple in the Ping kind of um, utility irons up to drivers for how many years now? This is the 2.0, and you know it's got that kind of a Chrome look to it. But does it feel different to you, or how does that how does that feel in your hands? It is a 85 gram stiff. So. Yeah. So I mean, it is 85 gram stiff. Normally I'm kind of might be playing an extra stiff shaft in, in a yeah, club like right. this. However, this feels pretty stout, yeah. pretty, pretty stable in my hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it makes sense that they would, you know, with the club like this, they would offer something a little more stout, a little more stable for a player with maybe some extra speed, you know, to yeah. make sure it's stable and they're not losing control of it. Yeah. Did not feel like there was any twisting of the face right. going on, yeah. or like that. So it, it felt pretty good. That's good yeah. feedback there. Yeah. Yeah, so that one left the face a little bit more open on. Okay. However, it, it still kind of flew through the sky pretty, right. pretty nicely. You can and see that, yeah, it was, it was curving to the right. The first mm -hmm. one that was curving to the right. Yeah, I think um, on my end, what I'm seeing is, I, and again, we can maybe hit one more off the tee, but the fact that that one went out to the right and it didn't, you didn't really lose any distance there. You can right. see how that dispersion is pretty, you know, horizontal, right? There, you're not losing much there, so I like that for sure. Yep, no, that was that was good. It didn't jump. I mean, the spin rate went from to 34, and I think my average is 3100. Yeah. So it's not like it was that right. that much higher. Wow. Yeah. Nice and straight. Yeah. It's pretty good. So here, let's quickly you can just go over the numbers that we have up here. Um, five shots with the 18 degree two iron off the tee. 103.7 club speed, 151 ball speed, pretty solid efficiency there at 1.46 on the smash. Just over 3,000 spin, you're carrying it 248 to go 266. Um, pretty good there, and you, overall things are pretty consistent. You had a couple maybe, you said you left the face open on the one, but otherwise, you know, the numbers aren't, you know, uh, I guess going up or down, fluctuating a lot, or pretty consistent stuff there. Yeah, I mean, on average, for me, for a driving iron, I'm looking in the low 3000s for, this, for the spin. Yeah. That's kind of what I got out of this club is, yeah, very, very good. Mm -hmm. Now, I felt good about it off the tee. Right, right. So, uh, but be curious, and maybe a club with a little more loft, maybe we yeah. try the three or the four, um, just to see what happens off the ground yeah. with this particular yeah, club. Yeah, for sure. I think that's worth, I mean, that's definitely worth testing. and. Uh, some forgiveness elements will be tested here too, I'm sure. But we'll go to the 20 degree uh, three iron here. We'll hit that off the, off the mat, I guess, and okay. see if anything changes here. So I'll set that up here. Wow. Oh, that was, that was pretty good for a three. Yeah, so a three you're thinking, you know, you're probably, obviously you add some loft and you're hitting it off the turf. Um, so you definitely won't, you know, equate to the numbers off the tee there. With the I find it interesting. My smash factor was the highest there, one four seven. I was one four six yeah. when I was hitting. The Didn't even two. see that. Yeah, but yeah, that was that was it. Well, minus the face being just a touch open. Mm -hmm. That was it. Well. Yeah, it definitely looked like yeah. <laughs> okay. Two sixty one total. Another one four seven. I was a little low on the face. Okay, we'll see that how that goes. Definitely a miss it. Okay. So you missed. Actually, it's weird that the spin actually kind of dropped a little bit. Stayed about, yeah, kind of the low 3000s. It didn't really fluctuate much. Obviously, the inefficient strike kind of yep. um, resulted in a, you know, the dispersion. You went a little left. But total distance is only eight yards short of your average. Um, you know, there could be worse misses out there. Uh, well, I did. It's to be expected when you got a, a driving iron trying to hit off the yeah. ground. You're not going to hit it flush every single time. Right, yeah. And, yeah. I, and that's, I think that's the expectation most players have when they take one of those. Kind of like fairy wood, it's the same thing. It's, <laughs> it's, it's tough to get 
into the air, and it's actually re the reason why so many players that use these are, you know, they're faster swing players. Um, you know, the average swing player probably doesn't play one of these in their bag because they'll be using a hybrid or a five wood, seven wood. Yep. Um, one thing I want to ask you about, just the feel at impact. Um, maybe if you can try to recall some of the other utility irons, comparable clubs that you've tested, um, is it, I mean, it's definitely a louder noise, right? That's just by nature the type of club, but um, what do you think about the, the feel and sound? Oh, yeah, it's, it's loud. It's yeah. loud and feels pretty explosive mm -hmm. off the face. Um, I guess loud and explosive is a, is a good way to, to explain it. Yeah. It feels like as soon as I've hit it, the ball's going to go yeah. pretty far and, yeah. and chase out there. I mean, having played I-500 in my iron set, it has a little bit of that ring to it to me. That would be a good, ex yeah, yeah, that'd be a good explanation. A little bit of that. I mean, yep. it's, it's a little bit thicker, but I think it's kind of similar in, the, in the, the sound that I hear when you when you make contact, so. Yeah. Well, let's hit a couple more, which I did. I was going to see if you were going to yeah. crack 150 with, uh, with the three. The turf, but, and a three iron, and you did. 149 smash. That's, a, that's about as good as I got right there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Maybe that's as good as you got. Wow. Maybe. <laughs> so... Just for fun, that was five shots. Let's but, get rid uh, of that one that yeah, I I'm just clearly gonna, missed. Um, so that's, you know, here's our dispersion. Obviously with that one kind of, you, one you missed a little bit there included. If we just go mark it, um, which one was it there? Uh, the one four all smash, number eight. Yep. Yep. Go like that, you know, we can see how this thing changes here. So we're looking at a, very consistent number there, distance-wise. Um, you know, obviously this, again, this club is built for someone that's relatively a, a pretty skilled player and someone that will hit the center of the face more often than not. And when they do, now you know you're gonna get a number and you can, it's, you kind of know what to expect, right? It's, yep. we, we talk kind of the same thing with players' irons, um, players' cavity and or muscle backs, but also it does apply to even a two and three iron here in the eye crossover. Yeah, I mean, with with my swing type, I'm not a huge fan of hitting a fairy wood or a hybrid yeah. or a driving iron off the ground. Um, but I was very pleasantly surprised how forgiving and easy this one was. Hit off the ground. Yeah, uh, it almost went as far with right. the three off the ground than the two, compared to the two off right. the tee. Yeah, and I mean, again, this is a small sample size, but it's got the numbers right there, and you're actually more efficient off the turf. Um, <laughs> Which again, I mean, over a larger sample size, I imagine that might change a little bit. But yep. we're seeing the carry and the total are only four yards off uh, from off the tee. And we're talking about a club that has two degrees more loft with the three iron compared to the two iron that you hit off the tee. So uh, really explosive, though, I think is is the answer here for my crossover. And I think we also saw your ability to turn that ball over just a little bit there. Um, and you still have that kind of workability, you know, at, like especially off the tee here, you're averaging still that 30 feet of curve kind of typical for that that draw you like to play. So yep. definitely in the bag there for golfers that are going to get fit for this club. I think it's going to be a really good bridge for someone, for example, in the 230s, uh, or maybe it's the I-59s, um, uh, or you know any other brand for that matter, in that kind of a more compact iron head transition from that to a fairy wood. The I crossover seems like a really, really good candidate for that. Yeah, I think end of the day, if you if you got some speed, it's a, it's a good club for you. But if you don't have, you know, we're talking, I'm swinging 100, a little over 100 miles an hour with this club. End of the day, if you don't have that speed, the landing angle is going to drop. Yeah. Um, your height's going to drop, and you may not get all the, all the success out of this particular club yeah. that you might be kind of looking for. Right. So it's important to definitely talk with a club fitter about whether your type of swing would fit into a, a mm -hmm. crossover like this. All right, well, Thomas, uh, testing complete there on the eye crossover. Um, we've got the numbers up here. We talked about them a little bit, but I mean, I think really good stuff in the initial test here. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, these clubs, you know, they're definitely designed to be like fairway finders. Yeah, and I think you saw that for sure. I think, especially off the tee, right? You, you were able to chase that thing out there with a pretty consistent draw and something that could slide into your bag and really any player's bag that maybe they have a few holes out there on the golf course where they uh, do, you know, it gets narrow up there for driver or even three wood and they need something else. I think this club in that 250-ish range, if you have some pretty good speed, this is going to be a great option. So 
Let's talk about the actual player type that it's for, right? Um, I think we've mentioned a few things already during the video, but let's kind of summarize into one piece here. You're fitting for the eye crossover. What type of player do you think is the most popular candidate, I guess, for it? I mean, first I'll talk about gapping. Yeah. So I'm talking about distance, trying to find a club that's going to fit between your furry wood and your longest iron in your bag. Yeah. So that's where this club fits into. Then it's going to be the you know the type of golfer. I would say most of the time this particular club I would fit, you know, a, a golfer that's got a little bit more speed. Yeah. Um, but looking for more control and looking for that maybe that second option off the tee to be able to get the ball in the fairway. Yeah. I mean, I think about myself when I'm playing a lot of par fours where there might be a bunker out there yeah. or it might be a hazard that I got to lay up short of that's maybe two, 260 out there mm -hmm. or 265. That's where this club kind of comes in. So yeah. it's, a, it's a great option you know, off the tee, but I even found success off the ground. I was quite impressed with how easy it was to hit yeah. off the ground too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially that's another, uh, I guess, scenario we didn't even think about, but par fives too, someone that likes to go after the par fives and two can get aggressive and let's say you find yourself at that tweener yardage between maybe a three wood and five wood or an iron really good option here again and you mentioned how easy it was to hit off the turf so uh, I think overall from eye crossover and paying here this is a really good you get really good performance uh, you get the workability they need and uh, again the consistency on the face as well with micro max screws I think that'll help a lot of golfers as well so uh, Thomas thanks for joining given your insight today hitting the, te the shots and testing Really good stuff, I think, from Ping. Golfers, make sure you leave your feedback in the comments on this video. Go like the video, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel for more Swing Reports coming in the future.